So first of all, thank you to Visual DX, Logical Images, Dermnet NZ, all the folks who've allowed me to use their images for teaching. So today I'm again going to take you through a step-by-step -step approach, at least how I approach a particular eruption using the physical exam. And here we're going to start with this eruption right in front of us. So remember, first things first, what's the primary lesion? Are we talking about a macule, a patch, a papule, a plaque, etc.? And here we have a raised piece of skin that is larger than a centimeter in diameter. So we're looking at a plaque. And this plaque, the next question we always ask about is secondary change. What color is it? So that's pink, that's erythematous. Um, maybe in patients with darker skin, it would be a little bit more hyperpigmented, um, or it could be a little bit violaceous or purple. And then the next question in secondary changes, is there anything else like crust or scale? And here I would highlight the scale that we're seeing in this ring. We're going to come back to why that's important. The next question is configuration. Is it linear? Is it serpiginous, polycyclic, annular? And here, what I would call this is annular. And the reason for that is because it's a ring of rash with a little bit of central clearing. So there's more accentuation around the edge of this plaque. So that would be an annular plaque with erythema and this scale that is secondary change. But importantly, the scale is on the inside edge of that annular plaque. So this is called uh, scale on the trailing edge. And then you can see that even better here, scale on the trailing edge of this annular plaque versus scale is along with that was along the outside that would be called scale on the leading edge. So again, how might this look different in someone with darker skin? So here we see the same type of rash, but again trailing scale on an erythematous or violaceous or hyperpigmented plaque that is annular. So what is this diagnosis? So whenever we see an annular erythematous plaque with trailing scale, immediately the mind would should go to something called erythema annulari centrifugum, which is a figurate erythema. And of course, you probably wouldn't know that unless you study dermatology, but that's why I'm here, to teach you some dermatology. And most people who see an annular scaly rash are actually going to first think about something like ringworm or tinea corporis, and that's totally appropriate. And so what does that look like? So that is also an annular erythematous plaque, but the difference here is at the scale. The scale here for tinea corporis is along the leading edge. It's on the outside edge of the annular plaque as opposed to the trailing edge, and that's really how we clinically differentiate them. Now you can do a biopsy to figure out the differences, and there are characteristic differences between EAC and tinea. Notably, EAC is going to have what's called cuffing, all that inflammations around uh, blood vessels, um, and versus tinea where you would see the actual fungal elements on your slide or on your specimen. So what can you do as a bedside test instead of a biopsy? Well, you can do something called a potassium hydroxide prep or KOH prep. That's where you scrape the scale off of this rash and then you treat it with potassium hydroxide, look under a microscope, and you would look for fungus. And that's what we see here. So these are fungal forms. You can see these branching hyphae that should be present in patients who have tinea corporis. But if you had scraped the prior rash, the EAC with the trailing scale, the KOH prep should be negative. And that's another way that you can help differentiate. You have to be careful though, because if you have someone with tinea corporis who's recently put antifungals on, you could get a false negative as well. All right, let's recap. So what we talked about today is specifically the diagnosis of erythema annularis centrifugum and how we differentiate it from something like tinea corporis. Erythe erythema annularis centrifugum or EAC is an annular eruption that's erythematous or in patients with uh, more melanated skin, more hyperpigmented or violaceous. It's got scale, but it's on the trailing edge of that annular plaque. This is not a fungal eruption. However, what's interesting about EAC is that it's a reactive process. So it can actually be reactive to a fungal infection elsewhere. So often we'll see EAC with people who have foot fungus or athlete's foot. And so we're still prescribing an antifungal, even though the EAC itself is not a fungal process. There are other things that can cause EAC, like it can be a drug reaction, it can be perineoplastic and secondary to an underlying malignancy. And my favorite one is that often we'll ask about blue cheese ingestion because EAC has also been reported for folks who recently had some blue cheese. Again, usually don't need a biopsy. It can be diagnosed clinically um, with that trailing scale on your erythematous plaque. Um, however, you could do a bedside KOH as well to help you uh, confirm that there's no fungus in that plaque. EAC actually self-resolves quite a bit, but of course we do some of this workup to make sure that we're not missing anything that should be acted on. Hopefully that's helpful today. Again, we broke down EAC looking at it from a morphologic perspective, looking at it from the skin exam perspective, how it's helpful to approach it um, from the very basics and to move forward from there and how to differentiate it from tinea corporis. 
Hopefully you found this helpful. And if you did, I hope you consider following me. You can see my handle down at the bottom. Um, that's the same thing that I use on Twitter as well as Instagram. Um, and you can also find me on YouTube. Uh, with that, I hope you'll join next time. Thanks for joining this time. Take care, everyone.